Hey everybody, welcome to my shop. Come on in. Hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to the shop. Got a project here, so that means I got another video for you guys. First, I just wanted to say uh, a big thanks to all my new subscribers. Thanks for finding the channel and thanks for watching my videos. Hope you're enjoying it. So what you're looking at here is I want to make a OD grinder for my surface grinder. That way it'll make it a little more versatile and you know maybe I'll make a dollar or two so it can earn its keep. <laughs> um, buying a commercial one is really expensive. I was looking on eBay, you know, like if you can get a Herrig or something, it's his uh, big bucks. So I figured what the heck, let's try to make one. So let me get the camera turned around and uh, show you our plan of attack. So I, my plan of attack is to use this sewing machine motor I picked up. And instead of you know building a fixture from scratch, I figured I'd give it a try and try to use a uh, spin indexer. And now uh, you know we may be setting ourselves back. Just depends on uh, you know how well this thing is made and how true it's going to run. What I want to do is put a collet in it, you know, check it, see if it uh, has a lot of run out or hopefully, you know, very minimal. The only problem is I don't have any high quality collets, so putting in some Chinesium collets, I may be introducing more error. I don't know. We're just going to have to see, you know, the process elimination. I can keep putting in different size collets and try to narrow it down see what we got but she's probably gonna take a little bit of work I don't know if you can see that in the camera or not but this bore is in line roughly looking at it you can see that the base is off so we may need to uh, you know, do a little milling or shaping and try to get this base cleaned up a little bit and you know get a good reference surface <clears throat> and hopefully they did a good job and this is flat and it's not like sticking up or sticking down so we'll see about that. We got this piece of plate. Basically, we can use this as the base. So if we mount this, let's say over here, and then we mount the sewing machine motor, uh, run pulleys with a belt. Now the sewing machine motor is uh, 7,000 RPMs. I talked to. Uh, Robert over there at Dudley Toolwright because he has a nice fixture he scored off, I think eBay, at a real good price. I think it's a Herrig maybe. And uh, his runs at 700 and, uh, I'm sorry, his runs at 3450 RPMs. So if we just do a two to one pulley reduction, <clears throat> that'll take this down to 3500 RPM. So we'll be right there in the ballpark and that'll be perfect. I don't have to do some sort of voltage reducer and uh, you know maybe possibly lose some power. So if we just do a two to one pulley ratio, then that should get us right there where we need to be. So that is kind of the plan of attack. And you know, we're uh, building this on the fly, so things may change as we go, but that's kind of the direction we're gonna head. So follow me along. I'm not sure how many uh, video parts this will be, but uh, hopefully we can make something useful and you guys will enjoy watching. So let's get to it. Got you over here at the surface plate. I took uh, the spin dexter apart, cleaned the old uh, grease or hardened oil that was in it. Got a little bit of a nice film away oil. Took that indexing plate off the top. Got, uh, just like I said, a Chinesium half inch collet in there with my half inch gauge pin. And if I can do this, you guys can see it. Uh, we got to about uh, a thou run out, it looks like. And I said it may be coming from my collet, I don't know. So, not perfect, but uh, for this project, we'll have to, uh, I'll have to go with it. So, let's uh, get a plan of attack of how I want to uh, mount everything and what I want to remove. I'm thinking about maybe grinding this part off I don't know yet just got finished looking through the old 
McMaster car. I think I found the pulleys that I want, so I'll have to get those ordered. And while we're waiting for those to come in, I think the first thing I want to do. So this thing, there's no uh, thrust bearings or anything in it. Basically, what they've done is, you know, milled a shoulder in there, and then they've got this collar. So it locks it in on this side, kind of register. And then here you've got the collar that sits in recessed in there. So that way your you know, spindle doesn't move. It'd be nice to lock it down. So we've got a little bit of play. The problem is, um, if I can get the microphone close, but hear that spot there? Right there, the rub. So it's not super smooth. I'm thinking if I go ahead and just dust off this face on the surface grinder that may help it out so, so I think that's what I'm going to do reduce some of the friction in there not sure how well you're going to see that I said I'm just going to dust this off and get her nice and flat. Hopefully I'll reduce some of the friction. Just got wrapped up. If you can see the surface finish. Looks really good. Feels a lot better too. So let's get over there and try it out and see if that helped. Well, that did seem to help. It is a little bit smoother. It doesn't have that catch point. I'm getting a microphone down here. See, don't hear anything like you did previously. So, excellent. That is good. That makes me happy. It is a lot smoother there. Since we don't have bearings to run against, we're gonna have to go against those surfaces. So, reduce as much friction as possible. Is the name of the game. Let's see if you guys can see this from where I got your position. So I decided to uh, <coughs> check the bore and check the face there, the front of the fixture. It looked like they uh, machined it, so I'm hoping it's right. And well, we've gotten lucky, and it is right. So I am just measuring off of basically the spindle. I've got it about an inch in the front to measure off of, and then i got an inch over here in the back. You guys can just barely see looking at the viewfinder, but you kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. <clears throat> so if I go in, well, let me zero it out here so you guys can, there we go, see what's going on. So, I mean, maybe a couple tenths and then come over here. Get to the back of it. Hopefully the camera's probably gonna start washing out. I don't know. Let me move you back. Let me try this. Hang on. Okay, let's try that. You can see a little better. And then keep moving. Don't want the indicator to go kaplunk. There we go. So now we're on the back side. And we're at zero. So that's good. We've got a uh, machine face there at the front to work off of. So obviously they just didn't bother to uh, machine the sides. So tickled. I've got the pulleys ordered from McMaster Car. They will be here tomorrow. So when we're, when those arrive, we can uh, make some more progress. I'm thinking we can do a couple small things now. So this tube here, I don't know if you guys will be able to see there or not. That's threaded. That's what pulls the collet in. And it's got a shoulder in there that it sits against. So, and this basically hand crank would you know, be on the end here and that's what you'd use to spin it. We don't need this, but we do need a way to spin this so we can tighten up and draw the collet. Uh, I mean, I 
could shave this off and use that as a maybe a retaining ring and then add a hand wheel but i think we'll just go ahead and eliminate this totally i like uh you know picking up hand wheels when they're on sale you know kbc will discount them every now and then so i'll pick up two or three different sizes or there's sellers on ebay that you know you can pick them up cheap so i always grab a bunch and i've got a tub up there with a whole bunch of different ones and different styles and different bores so I just kind of grabbed a few <clears throat> so what I'm thinking is maybe using this one it's a nice diameter you can kind of get some torque on it it won't slip in so obviously we just turn down the OD a little bit so she'll slide in get a nice fit and because we do need to have a you know a good positive relationship there. I don't think a set screw or two is going to hold it. Probably need to drill all the way through and put a roll pin. Uh, that way we can crank down on her and, you know, it'll work. Plus it doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks, you know, correct. And then there's no handle, you know, swinging around that can possibly catch us. So I think that's the plan of attack. Just go over to the lathe, gingerly chuck this up, turn it down so she'll fit into that bore. And um, let's see, this length here is about 400,000, so that's all the depth we need to go because anything after that, you know, it's kind of pointless because we just need to be able to retain, retain it with a split pin. So let's uh, get over to the lathe and get a little bit done. Okie dokie, let's shave off a little bit of plastic. Got to go in 400 thou, we need to take off roughly 146, or divide that by two, it would be 73 thou. And use good old high speed steel. We got our zero here. Like I said, anything close is good. I'm not building nuclear sub parts here. So, uh, hopefully, this stuff will break, it won't be nasty. We'll see. Just holding it lightly so we're gonna take it easy. Oh yeah, just making dust. Dust is good. Grab another 20. Give it a check here before we do our final. Should have about uh, 26 thou to take off. Let's see here. Let me get my calculator. See what we're at. 1.144 minus 1.108. Only 36. All right, divide by two, 18. Let's take off 18 and see how we do. Right, hold on, there we go. Okay. See if we can uh I got that zero to bring you back there. Oh yeah. Cause this thing wasn't perfectly round, so dimensions were all over the place. That'll work. We're set up over here at the mill. I've already uh found the sides. So I moved in two hundred thou. You know, half of the four hundred thou that we're we have to work with and then come over to find the center which is actually 0.668 so we'll center drill it I've got a 5 30 second drill bit and a 5 30 second roll pin that'll fit in there so let's get to it
Let's make sure it's snug. Don't want to bozo it. Wow, this is some soft stuff. That was easy, that is a super sharp bit, but I think it's just soft steel. Well, it's the next day. UPS man arrived with my two pulleys. So I went with steel, and my thinking is you know, a little bit of weight out here maybe could act like a flywheel to help give this spindle some momentum, help with the uh, little torque that this sewing machine motor has. Now, I may be shooting myself in the foot. This may end up being, you know, too heavy. We may have to go back and uh, revisit this and maybe go with an aluminum pulley or a Delrin pulley, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to remove a lot of this meat anyways, so, because this is pretty heavy right now. I think what I want to do is we'll go ahead and get this board out so we've got a nice slip fit on this arbor here. And I'm thinking about cutting a keyway and then we'll have to make a you know, brooch bushing because this is going to be an odd size obviously. And then uh, you know brooch this, drill a hole and tap it for a set screw and then that way that baby will be on there and I have a good positive drive. Checking this with my... Uh, hardness tester files it's not super hard so a 40 just wants to kind of dig in and then going with a 45 you can see it does and you can see the mark there so it's between a 40 and a 45 so that is machinable so we'll get over to uh the enco lathe i'll get the four jaw on We'll get this indicated in, and I guess we'll go ahead and start boring this thing out. We are all set up. Got it dialed in. We're running, I don't know, maybe less than a thou run out. <clears throat> and just a smidgen more on the face. Got to take this bore out to one inch, 777 thousandths. That'll just give us a nice slip fit, like a thou over, because the arbor is measuring 1.776 or just a smidgen over 45 millimeters for you metric guys so we'll just slowly drill this out and then we'll start boring <laughs> 